What's up guys, Stephen Cult of Mac here, and in this video, I wanted to take a quick look through all of the recently released updates for Final Cut Pro 10.3. I'm personally not a big Final Cut Pro 10 user, as I made the switch to Premiere, but I know there's a ton of you out there that absolutely love everything Final Cut Pro 10 has to offer, so I spent the last two weeks or so getting to know it once again. Whilst one of the biggest changes is the compatibility for the upcoming MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, allowing you to scroll and zoom through your timeline and so on, there's much more to this update than just that. Firstly, there's an all new redesign of the user interface which is now a lot cleaner, darker and flat, removing any textures that were there previously, which I actually prefer, as it's less distracting from your media viewer when editing. Plus, there's new quick layout buttons in the top right of the screen to toggle on and off certain windows, allowing you some extra space when needed. One of the reasons many professional editors steered clear of Final Cut Pro 10 after years of using Final Cut Pro 7 was due to the dynamic magnetic timeline, which was far from traditional. Now, 10.3 introduces the ability to group audio into lanes, which acts a lot more like traditional editing packages such as Premiere or Avid, while still offering the dynamic responsiveness that Final Cut Pro 10 is designed for, as well as improved roles features allowing you to focus on certain roles. If you colour correct and grade your footage, you'll now be happy to hear that 10.3 integrates wide colour gamuts. Moving away from Rec. 709, which was designed back in the 90s for the old CRT style monitors, in favour of the much newer Rec. 2020, which is designed for 4K displays. If you're not familiar as to why a larger colour gamut is a positive thing, it allows for more colours to be reproduced accurately within the system. Plus, the new MacBook Pro's display and LG 5K display also support them, so it makes complete sense although you can switch back and forth between 709 and 2020 if need be. Another upgrade is an increased variety of options for second screen workflows and custom workspaces. Final Cut Pro has been somewhat limiting in the past when trying to work with a multi-screen setup, as Apple has obviously been trying to streamline the interface for single screen setups such as an iMac or MacBook. But now, Final Cut Pro allows you to have a full screen timeline and browser mode when working with dual screens which should make for better use of all the extra real estate and will allow you to customise these workspaces and save them so you can switch back and forth. On top of that, there's also a new flow transition which is great for when you need to hide any jump cuts, the ability to remove effects or attributes right from the menu bar, and the inspector is no longer restricted by its lack of height. Thankfully, all of these changes are part of a free upgrade as opposed to a specific new build. Providing such a huge update after 5 years almost feels like a gesture of goodwill from Apple to any editors who are split by Final Cut Pro 10. Well, that's it for this video, but let me know in the comments section down below which editing system you use and why. Also, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single video from Cult of Mac. I'll catch you in the next one.